Welcome to Briar's Music Showcase. I'm Briar Cisneros, and welcome to another video. And yep, you read the title correctly. Yeah, I got more. So I just got CDs this time. I didn't get another vinyl um, because, you know, I wanted to save money. So I just went with CDs. So in total, I have 19 CDs in here, and we're going to go through them. And of course, by the end, you can comment below your thoughts on these albums that I picked up. So I'm not going to waste any time. Just going to go right into it. So, I'm just going to pick them out by rant. Actually, no. Actually, no. I do have them in a specific order. Because, you know, yeah, end off on a good note. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with here. So, the first one I got. And I already took off all the stickers and all that. Um, by the way, so you're not going to see the prices on these like I did before. But, first up, this was probably one of the biggest scores of this, of this like, little mini haul here. Um, we have the Scorpions with Blackout. Of course, Scorpion is a very well-known German metal band. Uh, this is one of their 80s albums, 1982, if I'm not mistaken. Um, not heard it before, but I've heard great things about it. I mean, of course, I have some Scorpions. I have Taken by Force. I have Virgin Killer. Um, I have Love at First Sting. And I think that's all I have at the moment. Uh, but yeah, very looking forward to giving this a listen. So, of course, before I move on, let me quickly go over what's inside. Uh, that's what the disc looks like there. It's pretty standard. Booklet folds out. That's kind of dirty, a little bit dirty on the inside, but you know, whatever. It's a given with these, with these being used. Okay, so that's the first one. Next. Another pretty good score. We have Nazareth, Nazareth with No Mean City. And it comes in this little LP replica. Ain't that nice. And look at that little cool little album cover right there. So this was definitely a good score because I've been trying to get more Nazareth. Um, but, you know, things keep getting pushed back. So Nazareth, Nazareth has been kind of on the back burner. But I never forgot him. And so when I found this album, I was like, you know, Let's go, let's go for it because this was I think this was the only Nazareth album they had in, in the whole store uh, so of course I got a, I pretty much sprung towards it so this came out in 1978 or 79 I believe from somewhere around there one of those two dates um, but yeah this is their 10th studio album so if we open it up again I'm not sure if this is what the vinyl was like for those who have the vinyl you can verify if this is accurate or not but it's pretty cool. You got some, it opens up even more. You have the more like some bands and some band shots and live shots, which is pretty cool. Let's show you the disc. This slides out. Pretty cool. Put that, slide that back carefully. And then here's the booklet. So open it up. Have some information inside. Here's a pretty interesting, kind of an interesting uh, band shot there. I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly so we can get through the rest here. Another band shot here. And, you know, another reason I had to get another Nazareth was because if, you, if you're not aware, the lead, the well, former lead singer, um, Dan McCafferty, passed away not that long ago. Um, it's been a couple months, I think, but, you know, definitely want to get another one to honor him. So there you have it. That's No Mean City by Nazareth. Next. This was probably the most expensive CD I bought from from that, from that the record stores as of now. This one was 14, was 14, close to 15 bucks. And... I probably, it's probably because it's kind of a bit rare. Um, so we have the debut album, the self-titled debut album of The Tubes. And it's part of the original master's recording um, thing or collection or whatever. Um, and I, I guess it's, this one's pretty rare. So I guess that's kind of why it was that expensive. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. The Tubes is a band I've definitely heard about over the years but never really dove deep and so when i saw this in the, in the you know in the bins i was like cool it's like a perfect opportunity 
So I know pretty much nothing about them, honestly. I don't even know any song by them. But I heard this one's pretty good. Like their debut is pretty well regarded. On the inside, you just got a bunch of bunch of boring stuff. You have a lot of this dead space here. Jesus. And there's the back. All right. Not much else to say about it, but yeah. Definitely interested to give this a listen. Now this one. Now, this was actually sealed because it was never been opened. Um, I, I kind of already opened it off, off screen because, you know, I didn't want to wait. Uh, but yeah, another Joni Mitchell. We have both sides now. And like I said, I did remove the shrink wrap already and I had to remove, you can kind of see, but it did have the sticker of death on it. So I had to, that was for taking that off. But yeah, Joni Mitchell. Um, so this is one of her later, later albums. This came out in 2000, 2000, if I'm not mistaken. And this is basically just a bunch of re-recordings of her, some of her old songs. Um, of course, she's, at this point, she's a lot older. Her voice is not as hot. As, he's not, she's not singing as high as she was, she's known for in her early career. Very low, um, very mellow. Um, I think there's a lot of orchestration on this one. I mean, some songs she cover, like A Case of You... Um, see, um, you're my thrill. Um, uh, don't worry about me. And of course, it has the title track, which is again a re recording of her very early song, I believe, on her second album, um, Both Sides Now. And it's a beautiful, beautiful rendition of it. And so, that's pretty much one of the reasons why I had to get this one. Um, uh, because man, Both Sides Now on this album is just wow very emotional very emotional song here um so yeah very cool let's open it up and you have some cool artwork as well here's what the inside looks like without the disc and here is the disc itself okay and then the booklet and some more pretty nice artwork I know Joni, I've heard that Joni designs a lot of her album covers. So I wonder if some of the artwork is hers. To, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool if that is the case. And just text mainly. And then here's the hype sticker that was on the shrink wrap. I kept it. Okay, moving on. All right, now this one, this one goes out to Garrett. I know he's gonna be, might be pretty happy that I got one of his albums. So I got Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run. Now I have said numerous times in the past that I am not a Springsteen fan, uh, but you know, I like the title track of this one. I like Born to Run and you know, Maybe this year, maybe this is the year where it will finally click and I'll, you know, maybe, maybe not be a huge fan, but at least respect him a lot more. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Again, I only know the title track. I like the, I like the title track. So we'll see how the rest of the album goes. I know this is one of his more well, very highly regarded albums here. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what to expect. Um, we'll see if my opinion on him change at all. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Um, but it's kind of folds out for this one. Uh, yeah. You know, here's the, here's the first side. Yeah, mainly just lyrics and a little photo of him there. On the other side, more lyrics and yeah, just lyrics and credits. There's the full artwork, by the way. All right, so that's that. Okay, and the rest of it, rest of this is just albums I pretty much already heard. 
um, because I've been meaning to get them on CD, but it took a long time to do so until, until now. Okay, so first up, we have Steely Dan. Yep, another Steely Dan. We have Everything Must Go from 2003. Now, you know, I know I get it. You know, obviously this album and the one before, Two Against Nature, I know those ones, people tend to ignore them a lot because, you know, they're not as good as, as the classic period. Uh, but, you know, I listened to them, like, like this was, like, during when I did that live stream with Garrett and Nick. Um, I listened to these ones, even though we weren't really supposed to rank them. Like, I listened to the those two later ones anyway, just to kind of see. I was kind of curious. And, you know, is this as good as that classic period? No. Does it still sound like Steely Dan? Heck yes, it does. I still think there's still some good material on 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 here and even on Two Against Nature, which I do plan to get at some point. But obviously, the record store only had this one. Uh, so again, I I I think there's definitely some good stuff on here. The last uh, the first track is great. Uh, the last mall, uh, things I miss the most. Uh, uh, God Whacker, uh, that's an interesting title. Uh, slang of slang, slang of ages, the title track. Uh, yeah, I think this is a solid album. Again, is it as good as the classic period? No, but I think there. But does there is there still some good stuff on here? I think there is. I still think this is worth a listen. So yeah, glad I glad I bought it. Again, two against nature is next on the list. We'll see when I get that one. Hopefully not too long from now. We'll see. And this one I got greatest hits because I think I'm pretty much this is pretty much all I I need from this band. Uh, so I got the Bangles, pretty well known '80s band, all female group. Some good hits, uh, going down to Liverpool, Manic Monday, uh, if she knew what she wants, walk like an Egyptian, uh, walking down your streets is another good one. They have the it also has the cover of Hazy Shade of Winter by Simon and Garfunkel, which I which I kind of like. That was like my first introduction to that song. And you have, you have the famous Battle of the Eternal Flame. Uh, but yeah, 14 songs, so pretty decent. Uh, again, this might be all I need from the Bengals. So, you know, I'm happy about it. Okay, next, Jimi Hendrix Experience. Finally, I got another Jimi Hendrix Experience one because all for, for a long time, all I had was Electric Ladyland. And so I found this one in the, in the record store. And we have Axes Bold as Love. I just realized I didn't show the I didn't show the artwork for uh, those past two. I'll do it after I'm done with this one. But yeah, this is the second studio album from the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, so basically, the reason why I got this one was because I believe it's pretty soon. Uh, more info coming soon, but um, I'm going to be doing another live stream with Adam and Jason and we're going to be ranking the Jimi Hendrix Experience album so all three of them and so I've been meaning to get more so when I saw of course this album in the store I was like you know perfect opportunity to get it because I did already listen to it and I'm not going to give my thoughts on this album just now uh, but all I'll say is that I really enjoyed it so let's open it up see the booklet uh, inside you just starts out pretty bare with just the lyrics and stuff like that but then now all of a sudden it starts to get psychedelic it's a lot of live shots some band shots here some history as well pretty cool to look at This last page. All right, let me show you the disc real quick. So when you take the disc out, just got another picture of Jimmy right there. Then you have the disc. There you go. Okay, before we get to the last one, let's quickly go through the other two. By the way, here's the back. I can't remember if I've been showing the backs either. Okay, so again, for the Bengals Greatest Hits, kind of just folds out. So this side, you just have a lot of creds and stuff like that. Then the other side, you just have a little picture of the band. 
and then uh, everything else. Then for the Silly Dan one, here's what this looks like for that. Put that to the side, and here's what it looks like without it. As you can see, there's a picture of Walter and uh, Donald. Bunch of clocks on the inside. Okay. Here's the back of that. Um, I can't. I don't think I showed the disc to uh, Bruce Springsteen either. Uh, but here it is. go all right now let's move on let's move on to the last one so the last cd i picked up and pretty well-known album by a pretty well-known band some of you might know this one the beatles magical mystery tour so this is an old pressing of it uh of course it has some of the big hits like the title track fool on the hill of course um i am the walrus hello goodbye Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, All You Need Is Love, many classic songs on here during the, this period. That's what it looks like on the inside. Here's what it is. In here, there's a little photo from the film. I just realized, does it even, uh, does it even have all the lyrics? No, it does not. That's kind of disappointing. It doesn't have the lyrics to all the songs. Uh, but yeah, you know, always nice to have more Beatles in the collection. Even though, you know, there might, I'm not sure how, I can't, I can't really compare with the 2009 remaster. Uh, but you know, it's good to have Beatles in. Uh, yeah, this will suffice for now. So that's all nice. So let's recap. So we have the Beatles, Magical Mystery Tour, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Acts as Bold as Love, The Bangles Greatest Hits, Steely Dan, Everything Must Go, Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run, Joni Mitchell, Both Sides Now, The Tubes with their self titled debut. Nazareth, No Mean City. And finally, Scorpions, Blackout. All right, so in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on these CDs or these albums, whatever you want to call these. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next video. So take care. Goodbye for now. Comment, subscribe, like, you know the drill. Okay, that's enough. All right, bye for now.